Allah will test using him, his slaves. Using who? Using Dajjal. Allah will test his slaves. And Allah will empower him with things that are usually only in the dominion of Allah. For example, he will be able to give life to the dead that he himself yeah. kills. And he will bring out the beauties of worldly oh. life and the greenery and produce out of it. And he will have his own version of Jannah, his own version of Naar, and his own two rivers. And he will follow the resources of this earth and the, and the resources, resources of this earth will submit to him. They will come under his feet. And his ability to command the sky to rain and it will rain. What, do you I'll believe be that this revolution is Dajjal? And there's no real person Dajjal. I do believe there's a person Dajjal. I do believe that. It's been physically described by Rasulullah I don't believe that to be figurative. But I do believe the stage for him being set, we have to keep our eyes open. We have to keep our eyes open. Whoever so, recited 10 ayat from the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf was pr is protected from the fitna of Dajjal. So the first 10 ayat in particular will give us a lot of insight about the fitna of Dajjal. What happens to morality in modern like, times? It's a little bit deviated and over time, it goes really out there. Alhamdulillah for the book that Allah revealed onto his slave and did not allow for any what? Deviation. Because in a time where every more every bit of morality will deviate, the only book that will stand its ground and will not shift will be this book. So the idea is, so long as we hold on to this book, I want to give you an image. Imagine a tree with deep roots and there's a flood. Everything is getting uprooted and getting washed away. And you're hugging this tree. So long as you're holding on to this tree, you will not get washed right. away. Which means when the Dajjal comes, you know, the Day of Judgment is right around the corner. When the greatest test comes, the next thing, the only thing left is... The earth is going to be barren land thereafter. Now tell me, did the Prophet ﷺ tell us to face the Jal and fight him and go in his face? No. Avoid him as much as you can. As a matter of fact, if you run into him, if you happen to stumble upon him, read the first 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf on him. Oh, read the opening of Surah Al-Kahf onto him. In other words, you're not looking for trouble. You are getting away from this overwhelming tyrant. The gorgeous connection between the story of the people of the cave and the protection of, from fitna of Dajjal. Let me tell you just one thing about it. There's a hundred things to tell you. One thing I'll tell you and you get your break. And that is that when you get to the 10th ayah, they are turning to the cave and they're saying to Allah, Ya Allah, give us some special rahmah, some special love and care from your behalf and facilitate some kind of guidance for us. Ya Allah, you can only, the only one that can be our refuge is you. By the time you get to the 10th ayah, our dua against the Jal and their dua against their king becomes one. Our problem and their problems merge in one dua.